second shot this week. Woo! Sick as a dog. But I'm better now. <laughs> I want to welcome you all to First Congregational Church in St. Albans. My name is the Reverend Jessica Moore. I'm joined this morning by Stefan Conradi on piano, Erin Granger, our music director, Elaine McElry, our videographer. First Congregational Church is a member of the United Church of Christ. We are a welcoming community of believers, seekers, and doubters. So please know that no matter where you are on your life's journey, you are welcome here to travel with us. I believe that Sue has an announcement this morning. closer. Good morning, everyone. It is beautiful today. We're going to start the ladies' breakfast up, as we did a few years back. We took a year off. Um, so next Saturday, the 22nd, uh, if you'd like to join us, and I've already invited Jessica to join us at the Green Mountain Cafe at 9 o'clock. Uh, we just have a nice casual breakfast for about an hour and a half, no rush. It's fun. And I think the men's group should start up too. So hope, uh, let me know if you're coming because I have to make reservations. Thanks. I just have a, a quick modification to the order of service. The anthem this morning will be Glory to the Lamb by David Blackwell. I could probably make it later, but I need a 10 minute meeting with the trustees after the other meetings that we have today, but it's uh, fairly crucial to what we're doing. And so if I could, if you would bear with me and just meet with me 
after the other meetings, that would be helpful. Thank you. I forgot to also say, um, uh, choir or choir wannabes, choir curious, we'll, we'll meet briefly after the meeting, after the meeting. Uh, <laughs> we might be very brief today and that's just fine. Um, and I will just say to, I, I had intended to um, individually contact all the regular members of the choir because I know maybe not everyone has caught um, the recording and I didn't. So if you find out later and you watch this that we met and got together, I'm sorry, it's my fault. You didn't miss that much. We'll do it all again next week too. Anyone up? I just had a quick announcement to make. Uh, I just wanted to give a very special thank you to Judy McElroy for being a deacon for the past couple of years. She did a wonderful job of keeping us all very safe during COVID because she did this endless research on uh, what all the governor's, um, I guess, announcements were on a bi-weekly basis and researching it and spending long, long hours into the evening looking all this stuff up so that we could stay safe around here. And I just want to give an extra special thanks for everything that she did to keep us safe during COVID. And thank you very much, Judy, for, for helping us out so much during this period, okay? And, and we just really thank her so much for being a deacon, okay? A lot happens behind the scenes that we don't realize. And Judy, um, you know, provided us with the contact tracing forms and lists and guidelines, and we do really appreciate it. So if you would join me in the spirit of prayer for the opening prayer. Life-giving God, your love and light guides us on the path of courage, compassion, generosity and grace. Lead us, we seek to follow your transformative love that turns sorrow into joy and despair into hope. O oh God, help us embrace your guiding love that calls us to live as your faithful witness. We want to reflect on your grace and redemptive love. God, open hearts to receive your gracious love and strengthen us to carry the good news of your healing power found in the light, love, and life of Jesus Christ. Amen. We'll move right into the prayer of confession. Gracious God, we confess our doubts that stifle our joy. Forgive us when we lack faith in you and comfort us when our fear outweighs our praise. God, forgive us when we fail to trust you and help us when we do not live as your faithful witness. Guiding God, forgive us when we are self-consumed and lack the time needed to serve our neighbors. In these times, have mercy on us, O God, and encourage us to be your love-filled by renewing us daily in your strength, we pray. Amen. Each day is a struggle as we learn to live in community, really learning again as we get to the end of COVID. And please know that when you fall, we all fall. We all falter. And please know that God loves you unconditionally. Today, tomorrow, the next day, and forever. Amen. So we have um, some very good news. We have some new member, a couple of new members joining. They are not strangers, however, to this faith community. Rita and Gerard, will you please come up?
This morning we are so honored to have two very active people joining us officially in this faith community, in this faith family. They've been here longer than me, and you all know them. Rita and Gerard were baptized as Christians in the Catholic tradition. They both went to Catholic parochial grade schools. They met at the VA and were married in a Catholic ceremony almost 35 years ago. Both worked at the VA for 30 years, Gerard as a pharmacist and manager, and Rita as a public relations director, and later as human resources manager. After relocating to St. Albans, they volunteered their time with several organizations, not surprising, which included the museum, the Lake Champlain Committee, and Meals on Wheels. Seeking a formal spiritual practice and Christian fellowship, they began attending services here at First Congregational Church, and boy, are we glad they did. Uh, one of the things that everybody talks about to me is how much they love our Facebook page and how uh, we have these beautiful images that get married to our morning reflections. And not everyone has Facebook, so I wanted to bring the picture. Dura uh, Rita's the one who designs them, and they're frequently with her original photos, and sometimes they're with Gerard's original artwork. So I'm going to show it around. So I'm just gonna walk it around. <laughs> it's the lovebirds. <laughs> and I have friends all over the country who follow our Facebook page, and they all say how much they love Judy just said we should see the Christmas card he designed. Friends in Christ, all of us are received into the church the sacrament of baptism. These persons have found nurture and support in the family of Christ, and in the family of Christ, this congregation in particular. They have been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm their baptism and to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of this church. They are here for the service of Jesus Christ, using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. Rita and Gerard, do you promise by the grace of God to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the way Jesus showed us, to resist oppression, to show love and justice, and to witness the work of Jesus Christ as best as you are able. If so, please say, we do with the help of God. We do, we do. with the with help, help of God. God. Do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in Christian faith and be a faithful member of the church, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in the world? If you promise, say, we promise with the help of God. We promise. We promise with the help of God. Do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this church, this family of people, sharing regularly worship of God and enlisting in the work of First Congregational Church of St. Albans as it serves the community and the world? If so, say, we promise with the help of God. We promise with the help of God. Do you Members of First Congregational Church in St. Albans offer your love, support, 
and guidance as Rita and Gerard become a part of this congregation. If you do, say, we promise with the help of God. Let us, the members of the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ of St. Albans, Vermont, express our welcome and affirm our common ministry in Christ. We welcome you with joy into the common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and our prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit May we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. As an affirmation of our common ministry in Jesus Christ, let us read together the covenant of this congregation. Acknowledging Jesus Christ to be our Savior and relying upon for wisdom from the teachings of the Bible and communion with God in prayer, we do now, in the sight of God, solemnly covenant and agree with each other to associate ourselves to be a church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We will endeavor to follow the example of Jesus and strive to do his will in all things. We agree to walk together and serve one another in Christian love submitting ourselves to the orderly administration of the affairs of this church. And we promise to labor together for the coming of God's kingdom of righteousness and peace and love through the whole earth. In the name of Jesus Christ, and on behalf of the First Congregational Church, United Church of Christ of St. Albans, we extend to you the hand of Christian love Welcome you, welcoming you into the covenant membership of the church. Let's see. And this is our closing prayer. Eternal God, we praise you for calling us to faith and for gathering us into the body of Christ. We thank you for your people gathered as this church, and we rejoice in those who have joined as new members this morning. Together, may we live in the spirit, building up one another in love, sharing in the life and worship of the church, and serving the world as faithful disciples of our friend and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> In typical membership, when people join, it's followed by the passing of the peace and people get to greet the new members. So since we're still in COVID and we can't do it, maybe just wish them peace as they're going by. Peace be with you, Rita and Gerard. You're in our hearts.
Well, I'm totally bummed because I was going to sneak a time with children in. And yesterday I went to Walmart. I got the cheapest welcome mat. And I put it over here, and I think someone said, that's gross, we're getting rid of it. <laughs> but, you know, just thinking about welcome mats um, with, without the display, <laughs> where do we put them? Where do you put a welcome mat? In the attic? In the closet? Front door. And why do we do that? Why do we put a welcome mat out? To welcome people. And they, what if we put a, a mat out that said, and I've seen these, go away. <laughs> Not you. But here at church, we love welcome mats. And we're a church of extravagant welcome. And everything that we do and all the ways we express our love in this world, it's our way of saying welcome to everyone. You are welcome here and we love you. You are a child of God and so are we. Let's have a quick prayer. Holy Creator, we are grateful for welcome mats. We are grateful for friends. We are grateful for our faith family. In your holy name we pray. Amen. This morning, I am only going to read the John passage uh, because I, I know there's a lot to do today. The reading is from the Gospel of John, 17, 6 through 19. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now, they know that everything you have, you have given to me, and it is from you. For those words that you gave me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf, I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me, I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy, and have the joy complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is true. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they may also be sanctified in truth. So ends this morning's reading. May God add a blessing of understanding to these words. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O oh God, my strength and my redeemer. Well, this is the final Sunday of Eastertide. Next week, we are literally swept into Pentecost with the Holy Spirit. This morning's reading from the Gospel of John is the final scene of Jesus' farewell meal, the Last Supper. In it, Jesus is praying to God, and the disciples overhear what he's saying. In John's Gospel, there is no painful garden scene. 
where we find Jesus praying in private, full of anguish. There are no disciples falling asleep, unable to stand watch over their beloved teacher. Jesus' prayer in John's gospel is undergirded not only by his impending death, but also and more so by the resurrection and the ascension. So it doesn't have the same heart-wrenching agony that the other gospels describe in the garden. The lectionary reading this morning does not contain the entire prayer, but most of it. In the full prayer, which is all of chapter 17 in John's gospel, Jesus retells really the whole story, telling God what has happened and what is needed for the disciples to move forward in his mission. The full prayer is broken down by scholars typically into three parts. In the first part, Jesus is praying for his glorification, which I understand to be the participation in when it comes to Jesus, the completion of God's work. The second part, Jesus prays for the disciples, and some extend that to the faith community at large. In the third part, Jesus prays for the wider church. John scholar Gail O'Day describes a third part of Jesus' prayer as Jesus is really asking and highlighting the unity of God, Christ, and faith community. Our reading is solidly in the second part. For the disciples, or faith community, however you want to describe it to yourself, in it, Jesus is referring to people who will be continuing his mission and work in the world. And Jesus asks God to protect them so they may be one as we are one. For I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Jesus continues, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. That's a lot to unpack. I think for modern readers, and really for myself, the prayer is a little confusing. There's a lot of repetition of phrases, and I'm not a poet. I would like to be, but I'm not. I'd love be able to be able to ride the wave of poetic imagery and glide along with ease, but unfortunately, I'm pretty linear. And while I can eventually catch the wave of poetic imagery, it's not seamless. But I can recognize poetry when I see it, and I see it here. And I think how Jesus is speaking this prayer provides a lot of connective tissue that enhances the meaning. For me, on first glance, it is confusing with its repeating phrases. All mine are yours, yours are mine. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. I am not of the world, they are not of the world, but they are in the world. They do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. Through these phases, Jesus makes clear his relationship both to God and to the disciples, and therefore the relationship between the faith community and God. As John tells the story, Jesus is praying aloud within the hearing of the disciples. In a sense, he's reassuring them, solidifying them on the path, on Jesus' path, which we have clear evidence is God's path. Jesus is also kind of separating the faith community from the rest of the world, which on first blush, for a first century rabbi who hung out with tax collectors and prostitutes, may seem at odds to separate out. So I think we need to look at what Jesus means by world. It is, I mean, it's clearly open to interpretation. For instance, there are many in the past harmful theologies that would view the word world to mean the planet and that we are separate somehow from the rest of creation. That, of course, leads to a lack of care of the earth and really abuses of the environment. 
because, well, Jesus wasn't of the world, and, well, neither are we. And it's a perspective that really disregards the great, amazing gift of creation. Within the context of the gospel, the word world comes into relief. And I think we can begin to grasp its meaning. Through his ministry, Jesus was certainly in the thick of humanity, sharing meals, as I mentioned, with tax collectors, with prostitutes. He healed lepers in the blind. His disciples were working fishermen, not people who held power or prestige. Jesus stood with the oppressed. He loved them, and he welcomed them. Jesus cleansed the temple. Jesus cleansed the temple of corruption. Jesus rejected the traditional human understanding of power. And we can see this time and time again in the Bible. Remember, after he was baptized by John the Baptist, Jesus goes into the desert and he's tempted by the devil. He's starving, and the devil says, You can turn these stones into bread. Jesus says, No. In Matthew, the devil takes Jesus up to a high point. And looking down from this mountain, he showed Jesus the kingdoms of the world in all their splendor. And the devil said, all these I give to you. You just need to fall down and worship me. And Jesus, of course, rejected, as he rejected traditional human understanding of power over and over again, as witnessed through his willingness to walk to his arrest and his death. I know I'm not a poet, and this isn't a poetic way of putting it, but Jesus rejected the traditional understanding of human power, and I believe that is the meaning of the word world in this reading. The phrase, they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. That's not, that means not putting human things above God not worshiping self-interest, money, not putting the small me ahead of other people's suffering. The ways of this world thrive on exclusion, not inclusion. The ways of this world break the golden rule, do unto others as they would have, you would have them do unto you. The ways of God's world, that's the kingdom of heaven. It thrives on love, it thrives on inclusion, and it upholds the golden rule, always. Historically, the church has been driven by the things of this world. It has excluded many based on color, ethnicity, physical ability, economic circumstances, sexual orientation, gender identity. The closeting of our queer siblings, excluding them from the full life of the faith community, that is our history. And it has created deep scars that run throughout the society and throughout, I don't know, our very church. It's part of who we are. And it's time that we put that behind us. As I've been thinking about the open and affirming covenant you'll be voting on later on today, I've been thinking about my aunt. And uh, I think that she must have, my sister and I were talking about this, she must have come out in the 60s, probably the late 60s, because neither of us have a memory of her without her long-term partner. But we never really got to know them well because they lived quite far away. They were, they were our aunts in Jersey. And... Uh, <laughs> And what I really remember as a child and, and as a teenager getting to know them, they like to smoke cigarettes, drink coffee, they laugh and make irreverent, humorous remarks, which is pretty much like the entire Moore side of my family. <laughs> it's who we are. <laughs> and Carol is my father's sister. On his side of the family, they, they really consider themselves to be traditionally conservative but I have my doubts. My aunt is the glue of that family. She's the historian, we're an old family. She's the caregiver. She took care of both of my grandparents through their death. 
She cared for her long-term partner who died of cancer. And nothing about her struck me as different, except that when it came up to it, she always stepped up to the plate for the family. And it wasn't until marriage equality passed that I got a sense of what this meant to my father. My aunt's was the first marriage in her town at midnight. And my father, uh, when he told me this, his voice faltered as he said, your Aunt Carol got married. She's the first in her town at 70 years old. And I could hear the pain in his voice and it, something really hit home for him. And I wonder if like me, my father had always just accepted my aunt for who she was and what she gave to the family and never really thought about the injustice that she may have bumped up against in her life until that fateful day when her civil rights were upheld. Hers was a, is a long and quiet journey. I think she was excluded from so much of society, certainly excluded from many churches and faith communities. To me, open and affirming is not political. It's a public acknowledgement of the exclusion that has happened. It's a public apology. And it's a promise to be open and willing to receive all those who society excludes, all those they don't even see. It's a welcome mat, and it's the path that Jesus showed his disciples. It's the path that is not of this world. It's God's path of love, a path where we begin to understand that we are all just children of God with all of our faults, this is the heart of Christianity. God, Christ, believer, united in this radical love and radical welcome. Amen. into joys and concerns. Would anyone like to share a joy or a concern you'd like the community to pray for? Well, I have a joy that Rita and Gerard joined. It's great to see Doug and Carol back safe and sound. Yay! Great to see Doug and Carol back from Florida. We don't have to be jealous anymore.
long absence of COVID and, and space, time and space. Any other joys or concerns? Please join me in the spirit of prayer. O Holy One, creator of all, lover of all of creation, our hearts are full of awe for spring. Leaves are leafing, flowers are blooming, and gardens are returning like old friends. Holy One, in this spring, being together brings us a special renewal that some of our number remain separated. May we be connected through your spirit. May we be reminded that you are always near, O oh God of peace. thankful for spring and this in-person worship, thankful for the relaxing of COVID restrictions, thankful for new beginnings and welcome mats. We are thankful for the vaccine and thankful that so many are vaccinated and more are on their way. We are so thankful to add Rita and Gerard officially to our faith family. It's really crossing a T, for they are faithful and active members already. We are thankful that Doug and Carol made it back safely, and we share in Carol's joy that her, mother, that her Mother's Day was spent with her son. Holy One, we still pray for those who continue to struggle with COVID in the areas of the world that are hard hit. We send our love and prayers to Edith and Flossie and Donna and to all our friends who are living safe but isolated lives. We pray for everyone who is experiencing loss. We pray for peace in Israel, Palestine, and for the children of Gaza and all people living under oppressive occupations. We pray for all people living today with the repercussions of racism and colonialism. We are flawed, Holy One. Please help us. We need deep healing. May you grant us peace and understanding. Please join me in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As you go out this week, Remember to love each other, hold each other, do good, and leave the rest to God. Amen. Mm -hmm.